morning, everybody. Thank you for that awkward and lukewarm round of applause. That was inspiring. It's good to be here with you doing stand-up comedy at 11.30 in the morning, the way God intended it. As we all know, comedians have a great reputation for being sober and awake before noon. So whoever planned this, thank you for screwing me completely. Um, that was a great introduction as well. Thank you for the blandest and most generic intro I've ever gotten in my career as a comedian. It basically was, hey, everybody, here's a dude with a microphone. Dance, monkey. Like, that's what I just heard. As a comedian, I'm used to a little more pomp and circumstance when it comes to my introductions. A lot of, hey, you've seen this next comic on whatever. That was fantastic, though. I'll take that. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Tom Tran. I am a retired United States Army Staff Sergeant. I'm a stand-up comedian. I'm a writer. I'm a television producer. I'm a voiceover actor. I work on the radio in Los Angeles. And I have so many jobs because I am constantly on the verge of being fired from at least one of them. Uh, I work on the radio in Los Angeles. I'll give you an example. I, I am a traffic reporter on the radio in Los Angeles. So I'm the guy on the air that tells people how to drive, which is ironic. <laughs> if you've ever driven around Asian people, you understand what I'm saying. That's not a stereotype. We're for real bad. I drive by accidents in LA. I'm like, don't be Asian, don't be Asian. God damn it. And I get it. It confuses people. No one expects this voice to come out of this face. I get it. I understand. I had somebody up come up to me after a show in L.A. and said, hey, man, you're the guy on the radio, right? You're really good. I listen to you every day. You don't sound Asian at all on the radio. Was that meant to be a compliment? How was I, ex how were you expecting me to sound? Don't take four or five. Number one, they all mess up. We don't all sound like that. Three of us, Jet Li, Jackie Chan, and Mr. Miyagi, the rest of us just talk normal. That's how it is. For real, I don't think I'm going to have that job much, very much longer. It's not my fault. It's not my fault. Because I have to read commercials on the radio as a voiceover guy. And I don't know if the people writing my commercials are trying to make their product sound sexy or if they're trying to make me sound creepy. You know what I mean? Like, you ever heard a commercial for something that should not be sexy at all? Like, I read one for a sandwich place in L.A., and their commercial ends with, our sandwiches are big, fresh, and meaty. <laughs> I'm like, you know it's a goddamn sandwich, right? It's not a cock dog. It's a sandwich. It's just... Calm down. <laughs> so I try to screw with the people who write my commercials now. Like I read one for a, a car company last week, and the commercial ends with, this is the ride of your life. This is one ride you don't want to miss. And that's how they want me to read it. This is how I read it. This is the ride of your life. <laughs> this is one ride you don't want to miss. <laughs> my boss comes in my studio. She's like, can you say that a little less rapey? <laughs> like you don't live in a windowless van, you creep. So I work for a, a news station in Los Angeles. I used to work for a rock and roll station, which was great. I love rock music. Problem is, the bands I listen to are just getting old and sad. Now, you know what I mean? Like, I love Leonard Skinner. I was stationed down in the South while I was in the Army. Love Skinner. Last time I went to one of their concerts, they came out. They're like, you guys want to rock? And we're like, yeah! You guys want to hear a song from our new album? We're like, no! Because I love Leonard Skinner, but new music by Leonard Skinner is like a storyline in a porno movie. Unnecessary and not why I'm here. So why don't you play some Freebird? I'll rub one out, and we will call this a night. That's how, that's how that works. <laughs> so I am a retired United States Army Staff Sergeant. A lot of people have asked me how I went from being a soldier to being a comedian, and I will tell you. My fourth day in Iraq, I was in a gunfight. Operation uh, Iraqi Freedom, OIF-1. Crossed the border, four days later, I took a gunshot to the back of the head. 7.62 round to the back of the skull. So when I came back, I needed to laugh. We all need to laugh. We all need to take a look at this profession of arms that we have and be able to laugh at some of the crazy shit that goes on. The craziest is that that gunfight where I got shot, I have it on video. And people are like, why do you have it on video? Very simple answer. I'm Asian. We videotape everything. <laughs> I'm actually going to show you this video. This is actual footage from April 3rd, 2003, my fourth day in Iraq. Now, the camera's rolling because I thought to myself, this looks a lot like Little Saigon. I'm going to show my father. Trans head. I'm bleeding. Where? Where are you hit? Listen head. to my words of inspiration head. after yeah. I realized I'd been shot. Uh, it looks, it looks pretty small. Fuck. Yeah. That was all that I Fuck. could think to say. I am. I'm hit. So I show people that video, and people are like, why do you watch that? Because I always get a different reaction from people. First time my mother saw it, she cried. First time my army friends saw it, they were like, that is fucking amazing. 
The first time my father saw it, my father, who was a prisoner of war in Vietnam from 1975 to 1978, hardest, toughest man I ever met, he watched that video, saw the blood coming down his son's neck. He looks me back in the eyes and he says, do you know how much pussy you're going to get with this video? <laughs> no, Dad, how much? So much, son, so much. <laughs> but we have to be able to laugh at that. Have to be able to laugh at that. Because if I didn't, I don't know where I'd be today. Comedy is my therapy. This takes the place of all of my doctor's visits and all the drugs they want to put into us. Laughing, this therapeutic thing that comes from your soul, is the only thing I've found that can heal that. One of the other effects of that is that I had to retire from the Army. So my short-term memory is shot. I can't remember anything past five or six minutes, which a lot of people think is awful. It's actually amazing, because I live with a woman. <laughs> I have a built-in excuse to forget everything. I forgot to fill the ice cube tray. She was like, why didn't you fill the ice cube tray? I was like, because I forgot. She goes, why'd you forget? Because I got shot in the goddamn head. <laughs> Go ahead and argue with me. Oh, not gonna. I didn't think so. Backfired on me. We were in Los Angeles playing volleyball. I go up to hit the ball. Somebody spikes it, hits me in the face, breaks my nose. I'm on the sand, crying, bleeding from my face, expecting a little sympathy from her. She looks over at me and goes, why don't you range her up, bitch? You got shot in the head. <laughs> Touche. Well done. <laughs> well done. You know what else is also great about not having a good memory? I can hide chocolate for myself at Easter and still be surprised two weeks later when I find it. <laughs> that is awesome. You know that feeling you get when you get your jeans out of the wash? You put your hand in your pocket, you find five bucks? That's how I feel every two weeks when I find an Almond Joy hidden around my house. <laughs> also backfired on me, because I live in Los Angeles, where it gets very hot. I hit a bunch of Almond Joys around the house. <laughs> Stuck one in my underwear drawer. She did my laundry. It melted. She opened the drawer and was like, did you shit in your pants and then put it back in? Why is there a whole almond <laughs> in the... What is wrong with your diet? But it's been wonderful to be here. It's been wonderful to be part of God Your Six and hearing all these fantastic stories. As a comedian, I love going on stage after a completely depressing story about <laughs> how reporters are not really <laughs> reporting the war they, the way they should be. That's great. I had to dig myself out of that hole. Awesome. But I will leave you with this. I will leave you with this. I retired from the Army in 2005, not because I wanted to, because I had to. And a lot of things have changed since I left the Army. And the biggest change, as many of you know, is that for the first time ever, women are being allowed to fight in the infantry. Fighting on the front lines, going to ranger school, going to infantry school. Personally, I don't think we should do this. I don't think it's right. I don't think it's okay for us as a country to unleash that kind of violence and psychological warfare <laughs> on our enemies, no matter how much they hate us. Have you ever fought a woman, much less a platoon of them? Are you out of your goddamn mind? That's suicide. I've been to Iraq. I've been outgunned 10 to 1 in a firefight. I've been surrounded by a battalion of Iraqis. I have also been divorced. Guess which one I would rather do again. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's all my time. Thank you so much for coming out tonight.